Welcome back, guys. Um, hopefully you're hearing this good and you're not getting that air conditioner that's right by my head too loud. Um, anyhow, what I'm going to look at here is a small update, mostly just to this part of the UI. Don't worry about these other things. I haven't really touched them yet. After some help with uh, Jimma last night, um, got to the bottom to, of a couple of things that were going on with this. The first thing is the um, display currently shows the selected unit properly now in the larger tile. You notice some of them here have a funny name. The, that's because that's the name they got when I placed them in here. So if I manually put them in the scene. These ones here were actually all spawned by the player unit out there. I just pushed spacebar to create one of them boats. Now, one of the things we had before was selecting here, you got some of the uh, unit tiles. Now, anything that I was placed Anything placed in the scene on load or using the Godot edi editor was given full shields and full health. Anything spawned by the Admiral there, the, the base, uh, was given a random amount of shields and a random amount of health. So if you'll see the little health and shield bars move. Now later I need to get those health and shield bars around the, uh, the actual units when they're selected. But now when I select all the units, you can see them 12 at a time. Now, what I've got, I've got three pages there. So, yeah, there we go. If you roll the mouse cursor, you can actually, if I'm over this and I roll the mouse cursor, you can actually see them change. So, we go to the first page here. And then when we go one more down, those are the next 12 units. One more, so there was uh, 26 units. Now, I don't have anything set up for when clicking these because the other option I wanted was clicking these would select that exact unit, but that'll be coming soon because everything in here is pretty much live. Um, when you select a group of people, it will give the team name here and the average team icon and the average health. But right now I don't have that set up yet. That's going to be pretty simple. Um, yeah, the other thing will be when you pick just a unit like that, going forward, what will happen is this here will hide because you're going to see this information here. This will be replaced by a, uh, a different kind of card here, which will be detailed unit stats and functions. And somewhere over here, we'll have your typical RTS command, command functions. But uh, at this point, they're all moving there's still some funkiness with the moves uh, i was doing some tuning of that with uh jim the other night we uh had to fire up the profiler and see what was using the most most of the pro uh, system process the movement of the ships is still well see a few weird a little bit of weirdness but i'm not going to worry about that too much weirdness because i think right now um, we're pretty close to the most ships we're probably going to see in the not sure exactly how many I plan on let being the, the unit maximum I might not put a unit maximum I haven't decided that yet but it will be based on uh, performance so it's gonna be hard to tell on what your guys computers can do I'm not sure how many units we have here but uh, I'm going to spawn a bunch. As you can see, they all come with different shield and different health. And if I do this, yeah, we're not, oh, wait a minute. One, so that's 12, 24. Mm -hmm. Let's try and make another batch. If I'm careful making these boats up here every once in a while. If I spawn one on top of another one, it'll shoot off randomly to the middle of the sky. Let's just give them a spot in the middle there. They try their best not to smash into each other and to steer. I'm going to have to do some more tuning with that. Um, it is kind of fascinating to just watch them move sometimes. Ooh. Ooh, see there's some lag happening there because they're they're actually fighting there's a lot of physics being run right now because the collisions and uh, mo the move commands 
so there was a couple there's a couple seconds there where the physics was actually uh, lagging but now they're just slowly gonna move each other out to an even spacing and what do we got here yeah there we go we got a couple pages one page two page three page four page it automatically um, the unit paging here automatically uh, cuts the slider up into the correct amount of units I'll just make some more here Whoop! Oh, yeah, we had a fly away he got knocked in outer space there somewhere there he is we'll pull him down and tell him to go join his friends that really shouldn't happen for you guys that's only because I have no cooldown on ship creation uh, when the game is running you won't be able to spawn ships fast enough to stack them on top of each other normally doesn't mean somebody won't figure out how to do it but um, yeah so also when they're spawned um, the other thing I have to do is allow the user to set the uh, the target spawn point and I might put a little bit of randomness in that spawn point say plus or minus four or five units and then instead of them dropping in like this um, you know there'll be some I guess a, a spread or so there's a there's a batch here again let's select them uh, I don't know how many are selected because I've got rid of that uh, thing from down here I should put a little number up here I guess um, but we've got that many units selected uh, it's a little harder on the system only by uh, I think 1% drawing all those green outlines so it's not the polygons that uh, are taking up any system resource right now it's actually the physics threat or there is no threads at the moment everything runs in one core uh, until this engine gets an update that it's truly multi-core um, just running this in Godot by the way in case uh, people haven't been following along but anyhow so we have a fair but fair batch of them collected now I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head so that'd be one two three four five so what's that 48 50 53 that's 53 ships according to that hmm. doesn't look like 53 ships is it yeah, I guess so it's 53 ships Yep, see they're all still coming in. You can select the, the different units here. There we go. And of course the ones that have all their... They've all been sufficiently mixed together because of the given the commands. But just for fun, while we're all here, let's zoom out. Now remember, we don't own these two ships here. They're actually the bad guys. So, well, they're another player. I just have them there for testing so let's grab the fleet this is gonna be bad I'm going to hide UI oh I can't even hide the dang UI there we go just for fun let's zoom into that oh the calamity has already begun and yep yeah, there's the lag What is that one frame per second at the moment because they're doing their best not to um, smack into each other but as with most RTS's the pathfinding is only so smart and I can't update the navigation mesh in real time or else I could make these ships aware of each other through the navigation mesh and make them repath every quarter second or something but uh, yeah, that that just won't happen when you've got this many units. Again, there's I guess 50 something there. See, I can take a bit of a load off the uh, off the uh, physics thread by grabbing some of them and giving them a. Oh, uh, can't even get a raycast through in that time. Boom. 
once they get enough of their initial cells spread out, the uh, that lag should stop. <laughs> yeah, these guys here are having some fun. Get them out of the way. So you notice once they're not colliding with each other, the lag kind of goes away. Yep. It's the math that they do to deal with colliding with each other that's expensive. Yep, see? Now there's not that many collisions happening, that's no problem. So if I was to take the route of just simply ignore the inter-unit collisions, which you've sure all seen many, um, many RTS games do, that would be fine. And I have thought about doing that I, I think you know I might if I'm gonna allow large number of ships might give a control panel option to allow users to disable multiple uh, I guess it would be uh, multiple collision detection groups or make it so that uh, they don't detect collisions with their own team only other teams and even that might be pretty heavy, but as you can see, if they're moved around in small sets of, of units, there isn't really, um, there really isn't a slowdown. They all just work. The moving isn't the problem. It's the when a set of units tries to go through another set of units. Oh, see, now there's some inter, inter unit bumping around stuff going on here. And that causes a fair amount of processes, fair amount of processing, sorry. So when there's just one unit moving, now this is a group going through another group. When this happens, let's just zoom in here. You can see like they, they try everything, even driving up and over. But uh, unfortunately, I think to keep the processing the way it is, that's going to have to be a necessary evil. It's that um, bumping into each other. It's a physics process. Every ship calculates eight times per step what it should do to fix its physics and uh, it tries really hard. It's using bullet physics underneath, by the way, for any people that are uh, wondering. Um, so the number of steps is, uh, is adjustable. We've tried lowering, it actually makes it worse. Like skip a few steps, it makes it worse because it's not moving smart enough between steps. But anyhow, here we have a, a bunch of ships on screen. I, again, not exactly sure how many. And those are the bad guys, we'll say. And this is actually a good idea, the size of the play area, actually, because I'm pretty sure the other player spawns somewhere up here in the corner. Um, so there's that. And then there's going to be down here. And then I'm going to try and get uh, ship to ship fighting between the Corvettes. Uh, something that I haven't covered before because I have to do the art for it is these Corvettes are actually going to be a type of missile Corvette. And the reason why they have that giant flatbed on the back is uh, the flatbed itself. Let's come down to one here. This flatbed back here is going to have a missile deck on it. You can sort of see just in the texture there's the hatches, but there will be a missile uh, deck that comes out either, kind of comes, animates up and pops out either side and allows the fire good missiles. And I'm hoping that that doesn't darn near kill the physics processing. I think it should be okay. But uh, anyhow, you can tell all these guys here were spawned after there was a target. Any of the ones with uh, a gun turret not moving, like this one, he was one of the ones that were there in the beginning that actually had a target while the target was live, because his turret his turret stuck into a different mode. But uh, yeah, they're up and running. I've changed how the uh, the wake renders. I've lowered the quality on the wake a little bit, um, just to make the the wake a little easier to process. Whoops, went in the ocean there. Um, just to make the wake a little easier to process, and that seems to have helped a little bit too. Anyhow, uh, if you've watched to this point, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, hope this was interesting to watch it this long. Anyways, anyhow, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.